there. Hi, how are you? Good. What's your name? I'm Sive. And are you ready for us to ask you 73 questions? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Perfect. What do you study at ICSI? I am studying pharmacy here. And what year are you in? I have just finished fourth year. How are you finding that? Yeah, I think it's going well. Can we ask how many years is in the pharmacy course? Yeah, it's a five-year program. And is it a difficult course? Um, it can be at times, but I think it's going well. Yeah, so where are you from? I am from Dublin here in Ireland. And can I ask what is your current living situation? Yeah, so I'm currently living at home uh, just because of Dublin rent prices, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive pain. So what did you want to be growing up? Um, I actually wanted to study medicine growing up but I think pharmacy suits me better now. <laughs> and when did you realize that you wanted to study pharmacy then? I think around fifth or sixth year, um, I had a really nice chemistry teacher and she kind of influenced me in going into pharmacy. And I know it was a while ago, but do you remember what subjects you did for the leaving suit? Um, yeah, so I did maths, English, Irish, uh, two sciences, biology and chemistry. And then I also did French and music. Wow, that's a lot of subjects yeah. there. So do you think chemistry is crucial for studying pharmacy? Um, I think it can be an advantage, but you do do introductory classes in it in first year. So no worries if you haven't done it. That's good to know. So are there any scholarship opportunities available in ICSI for pharmacy students? Yeah, so there is the here and then the dare um, opportunities. And then there's also the Kieran Pathak um, scholarship as well. And do you know of any other routes to study pharmacy in ICSI for students who might not get the points? Um, yeah, so I think the uh, pharmacy technician course is definitely a good one to do. Um, and then you can come in to do a mature entry um, pathway as well. Great. So why did you want to study in ICSI? Um, well, I definitely like the idea of studying in town in Dublin. And then I had also heard that or CSI had a really good clinical program, which was something I was interested in, so. And have you found it easy to make friends here? Um, I definitely, um, I think I was very lucky that I met really nice friends in first year and we're quite close, so I'm happy to have them. And are there a lot of clubs and societies in ICSI? Uh, oh yeah, there's loads. So um, I definitely would recommend going to the Pharmacy Society. And then there's many like sport clubs as well. So the hockey club, um, the GA club as well, and loads more. <laughs> so what has been your favourite memory so far in ICSI? Oh, um, to pick one, I would say any of the pharmacy balls. They're definitely the event of the season. <laughs> And what building are we in at the moment? Uh, so we're currently in York House, so this is where pharmacy would have all their labs. And would you spend a lot of time here? Uh, definitely. Um, I'd say at least once or twice a week in here. So do you have a, a part-time job at all? Yeah, so I'm working part-time, would you believe, in a pharmacy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> And how many jobs have you had in college? Um, God, I think I started off waitressing and then I wanted to get the um, pharmacy experience. So I started working then part time in different pharmacies. Great. Could you tell us a bit about where you've worked? Yeah, so I worked in a Hickey's pharmacy. That was my first job. Um, and then a McCabe's pharmacy. And then also now I'm working for Pure. And do you think it's doable to have a part-time job during college? Uh, yeah, I definitely think so. Um, yeah, <laughs> I definitely think so. It can be challenging at times, but no, I think it's doable if you only work one or two days. And when do you start placements in the pharmacy course? Um, so we start them in second year. So um, we do a 10-week yeah. longitudinal placement. So we, every Tuesday afternoon, we would go in to either a hospital or a community pharmacy. And then in fourth year, then we do four months in first semester. And then in fifth year, then you have your eight month placement. And do you get experience in community, hospital and industry setting for placements? Yeah, you can. Um, so fourth year, you can have the opportunity to do all three. And then in fifth year, it's just either community or hospital. Could you tell us a bit about the placements you've been on already? Uh, yeah, sure. So for my second year placement, I was in Blackrock Clinic in the outpatient pharmacy. And then for fourth year, I've just done four months in the Matter um, Hospital. 
sounds really interesting. So. Yeah, I really liked the uh, the clinical aspect of it. So yeah. definitely would recommend trying to do one of those placements. And what is the process like for your finding placements? Do you get any support? Oh yeah, you definitely do. Um, so it's run by Appel. So there is an Appel matching process. So you get your placement based on preferences and then also you have to do interviews and stuff as well. But there are Appel um, coordinators in the college, so they give you loads of support. And would you get paid for your these farm, these placements? Um, it depends. So for community placements, most of them do. And then for some hospitals, unfortunately, they don't pay yet. So what does a typical schedule look like for a pharmacy student? Uh, I'm just going to open the door here. Um, so generally you have lectures every week and then you would have a lab maybe once a week or once every two weeks. And then also um, some tutorials at the end of the week as well. So how many hours then would you have? Um, sorry. <laughs> no worries. So hours, it's roughly about 30 to 35 hours um, per week, but that kind of changes depending on the module and the year you're in as well. And is there a mix of in-person and hybrid learning? Um, yeah, so at the minute, because of COVID, um, we still do some online lectures, but we have most of the tutorials and labs back in person, thankfully. And do pharmacy students in ICSI have access to the simulation facilities? Um, not as much as the medicine um, or physiotherapists, but uh, you do, I think, in second year, uh, we do a musculoskeletal system uh, module and we do have the opportunity to use it there. So where are we now, can I ask? Uh, so we're currently in the Kieran Pathic lab, um, so a lot of the farm students would spend time here. <laughs> and can you show us what's in these cabinets here? Yeah, sure. So um, in here we have a lot of the drugs that you would see typically in a community pharmacy, um, all out of date, obviously, <laughs> for learning purposes. Of course. And can you tell us what the dispensing labs are used for? Yeah, so it's kind of to typically mimic um, a community or hospital pharmacy. So we would pick the drugs here and dispense them off the computers and then kind of practice with each other, um, counselling patients on, you know, the medicine and different side effects, things like that. So how much of a practical element is there in the pharmacy course? Um, so that's probably one of the main reasons I like the pharmacy is the practical side of it. Um, so every time we learn about a new drug or a new system, um, we would, you know, counsel each other on the new medicines and have the opportunity to do practical aspects on, on those drugs as well. What has been your favourite module so far and why? Um, I definitely liked the cancer module that we did in third year. I think that's kind of an area I would be interested in. And what has been your least favourite module then and why? Um, <laughs> I, th I did like all of them, but if I had to pick a least favourite, uh, maybe the central nervous system module, just because it was quite difficult and uh, the exams were a little bit tough. <laughs> and how did the exams in general go for you this year? Um, hopefully, well, we haven't got our results yet, but uh, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you did great. So can you tell us, are there any research opportunities available for pharmacy students in our CSI? Yeah, so um, there is a research summer school that pharmacy students have the opportunity to apply for and partake in. Um, and then for some placements, you do have the opportunity um, to do research. And as well, for fourth year, you do have your thesis, so that can, uh, is like a research module, so that helps as well. And are there any opportunities to go abroad at all? Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the opportunity just because of COVID, um, but I think some placements in previous years did have the opportunity to go abroad. And I think you kind of mentioned it before, but what RCSI student event is your favourite every year? Um, yeah, I still have to go with the farm ball. <laughs> it's definitely a night to remember. A bit of a random question, but if you could invite three people that are alive to a dinner party, who would they be? Um, that's a good one. Um, if I had to pick, I would say Countess Markovich, um, Peter Tchaikovsky, and maybe Lady Gaga, just to switch it up. I think she's a bit of an icon. <laughs> that is an impressive lineup. <laughs> and what dinner would you serve them? Um, ooh, probably fajitas. That's kind of the only thing I can cook, really. <laughs> that is a staple. <laughs> can you play any instruments? Uh, yeah, I can play the piano and then the ukulele, but 
not as well as the piano. <laughs> and how about sports? Yeah, so I play hockey um, and I also sail as well. So what do you find is the best way to wind down after a long day? Um, for me, I would have to say listening to music or sticking on a podcast and just going for a walk or, you know, maybe binging some Netflix shows as well. <laughs> Where would we normally find you then on the weekends? Um, so working on a Saturday and then other than that, maybe spending time with my friends, my family, either going for coffee or a walk or going for a drink as well. So you mentioned earlier that you're a Dublin girl. Mm -hmm. What is your favourite part of Dublin then? Um, I don't know. I would have to say maybe somewhere by the sea like Dunleary. I just love, you know, seeing all the boats because I said I'd sail and uh, just being outside in the fresh air by the water is really nice. <laughs> so some class questions for you then. Mm -hmm. In terms of your class sizes, what are they like? Um, so I think it kind of depends with each year. And we started off with around 60 people in our year, um, but then it slowly you know, gets smaller and smaller because um, some of the international students then leave after fourth year. So I think it will get smaller now in fifth year. And what would the gender breakdown of each year be like? Um, again, it depends. I know I think there is more female to male ratio in pharmacy, but not too bad. I think it's roughly maybe 60-40 in our year, so not too bad. And you mentioned some international students would go back home to complete the programme. So what are the numbers like of Irish and international students? Um, yeah, again, it depends. I'll just skip past you there. Um, so I think roughly maybe 60-40 as well. Um, so again, not too bad. 60 for um, Irish and then 40 for international students. Okay, and how many hours of study would you typically do every week? Um, well, <laughs> in a good week, if I'm trying to be good, I would say typically maybe two or three hours a week, or a day, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I try and aim for anyway. <laughs> and how would you be assessed in your exams? Um, so we do have summative assessments and then a few continuous assessment modules as well. Um, so for the summative, we would have you know SNQs, so the kind of essay style questions, uh, MCQs, and then a few CA you know reports on maybe some lab reports, and then we also have OSCEs um, each year as well, just to kind of you know, um, examine our clinical knowledge and, you know, our patient counselling and things like that. Great. So could you tell us a bit about the mental health first aid training? Yeah, so we did that online this year or last year, I think. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great opportunity to learn just to kind of help people with different, you know, mental um, disorders and things like that, just to help them if they were in different situations. So how to help people if they were having panic attacks and things like that. So it was a really good opportunity and a great uh, learning experience. That sounds very handy. So is there much interprofessional learning with students from other healthcare programmes? Um, yeah, so there can be. Um, I think maybe once a year the college try and do it. Um, so we would have IP sessions with either the medicine students or the physiotherapists, uh, just depending on the module. And you mentioned that you're living at home at the moment. So mm -hmm. how long would you say it takes you to travel to college? Um, so I get the bus normally into college. So it takes about an hour on a good day. <laughs> There's no traffic. And what time would you usually wake up then? Um, if it's for 9am, I'd try to get up maybe about half six or seven just to try and get in on time. <laughs> yeah, the 9am lectures are a pain. Mm. <laughs> so where would we normally find you then in between classes? Um, so probably maybe at the canteen or in the new um, building opposite 123 St. Stephen's Green. Um, there are the blouches that you've probably seen when you walk up York Street. So um, a lot of people just kind of congregate there and have lunch and have a chat. So that's kind of the main social area of our CSI. <laughs> Great. And do you have any summer plans? Um, so I'm trying to make the most of the COVID restrictions being lifted. So I will be going away um, to Greece and to Italy and then just working as well part time just to, you know, save up and get the experience in the pharmacy. I'm very jealous of all the holidays. <laughs> so can you tell me three things that are on your bucket list? Um, I don't know, maybe I do like traveling. So trying to get to places that I haven't been to before. Um, I really want to get to America, to New York, um, and maybe somewhere you know exotic like Fiji or 
somewhere I've heard that's pretty cool <laughs> very nice and a bit of a deep question but what is the biggest risk you've ever taken um oh god I don't know I'm <laughs> probably maybe trying to get into pharmacy here <laughs> yeah I'm glad it hopefully paid off so can you tell us the type of careers that you could go into with a pharmacy degree um so I guess the three main ones that people normally hear about are going um into community pharmacy or into hospital pharmacy but in hospital there's loads of different opportunities um, and also industry as well. So you could go into maybe the quality side or the research side in there as well. And are there any unconventional pharmacy careers you've heard of that people would never think of? Um, I do remember that someone came in and gave us a talk and they also do kind of consulting for TV programs to help write the scripts for TV series just to make them more accurate, you know, if it was like a medical drama or things like that. Wow, yeah, you'd never really think of that. Yeah. <laughs> so what are your own plans then after you graduate? I know it's a bit of a big question. Um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure that one out. <laughs> I definitely think I might take some time and maybe uh, travel and stuff. And then when I come back, I'll keep my options open and have a think about it. <laughs> you definitely deserve a break after the five years. <laughs> So do you think your experience in placements have influenced your decision at all in terms of where you want to end up? Um, I do. I did really like working in the matter and the, definitely the clinical side of it um, and also getting the opportunity to, um, to uh, go up to the ACU and work with like the cancer side of pharmacy. So maybe something like that would be interesting. Great. So you're going into your fifth and final year now. What are you most looking forward to? Um, I definitely am excited to get out on placement and, you know, work in the real world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And what do you think you'll miss the most when you leave RCSI? Um, not to be cheesy, but definitely probably to see my friends every day. You know, I do like seeing them every day and definitely probably the atmosphere in RCSI as well. You know, it's such a welcoming place and I definitely will miss it. Of course. So how would you describe your time in RCSI in three words? Um, so rewarding, memorable, and just an overall blast. <laughs> and my final question to you, mm -hmm. any words of wisdom for any prospective students that are watching? Um, I would say if I had some words of wisdom would be just to be yourself, um, you know, be open to everything, keep consistent with your work, and I'm sure you'll fly it. Great. Thank you so much, Saif. No worries. Thanks. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye.